Hey everyone, welcome to Connie's Journey. I started this YouTube channel so that I could share a little bit about my life as a wife, a mom, a business owner, and a patient living with autoimmune illness. In October of 2018, I had life-changing surgery and I'd like to share a little bit about my journey with you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to Connie's Journey. Well, I finally did it. I went ahead and did the complete proctectomy, also known as the Barbie butt surgery. I know last time I had recorded, I was still in the process of deciding exactly what I wanted to do. I am now four weeks post-op, and I wanted to give you guys an update of what's happened over the last four weeks. I went in for surgery on June 21st, and everything seemed to have went well. Um, I woke up from surgery. I was doing okay. They started me on clear liquids, moved me to soft foods. And then all of a sudden, on day three, um, my bowels went to sleep. This is very common and can last three to seven days. However, I didn't realize that it was that common. So I thought because I was able to tolerate the food when I woke up and my stoma was working, that everything would be fine. But little did I know, it wasn't. I was very sick and ended up having to get my very first NG tube, which I completely cried and told my hospital, my husband to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Um, I had only let them leave it in for two hours because I basically thought about everything and it was late at night and it had suctioned out about 300 cc's, I think it was in cc's, and then it had stopped suctioning for about 45 minutes, absolutely nothing was moving through it, it was not, it was almost like it wasn't working, and what they explained was, it had sucked everything out in my stomach, and that it takes a while for the stomach acid to basically rebuild. I thought to myself, well if it got everything out of the stomach, then I might as well have the tube removed, and that way I could end up having the tube replaced the next morning and give myself some peace while I sleep. So they were like, well, we're gonna have to put it in again. And I was like, I don't care. I mean, I already know now what it feels like going in. You just swallow, swallow, swallow till it's all the way down. What's worse is leaving it in. I have right here a, it's called a goiter. It basically um, has to do with like your enlarged thyroid. And I'm gonna have to double check on that. I haven't paid much attention to it since I was told I have it, but it explains why I have trouble swallowing sometimes, and that was going on for a while. Um, my son actually had pointed it out when I was eating one day. He said, how come you eat so slow now? And I said, oh, I've been having some trouble swallowing. Well, that was about four years ago. I never had it checked until recently. So with the swollen area here and the tube in there, it was almost impossible for me to swallow. And I felt like leaving it in longer and longer, it was gonna aggravate it more. Plus I have the mast cell diagnosis and really just anything that gets irritated in my body, um, my system just overreacts to it and it makes things worse. So they ended up removing the tube. The next morning they came in, my stomach looked like I was six months pregnant. I looked like I was six months pregnant the doctors came in the next morning, they're like, we need to put the tube back in. They literally left the room and 10 minutes later, I threw up and my stoma started working. So I did not have to get the NG tube the second time. And from that point on, things were doing a lot better. The hardest part in the beginning was I had to have the catheter for three days and the catheter just was not working properly. So I ended up having to reposition it constantly to have it empty, whether I had to stand up, whether I had to you know, change positions on how I was sitting, how we would lift the tube, my husband would have to help me, my sister came one day and helped me. It was a whole bunch of chaos, and by the time my doctor came, I was crying. Um, he had never seen me cry before, and I had warned him that you know, this is a big surgery and I might cry this time, but I thought I was gonna be crying from pain where the Barbie butt surgery was, but that wasn't bothering me at all. It was all these other things that were happening. They ended up starting me on antibiotics because I had some blood work come back that was showing that now I had a UTI, which I already knew that was gonna happen because of the catheter and it backing up constantly into my bladder and not emptying properly. So I went on um, some antibiotics, IV, for about four days, I believe it was. And then um, everything 
seemed to have gotten better and I was sent home and exactly three weeks to the day of my surgery, I developed an abscess where the Barbie butt surgery was. I made it through the weekend and till Tuesday and I was hoping because it started draining on its own that it was gonna resolve itself. But I, I don't know much about abscesses so I was just like, okay, well the stuff is draining so that's a good sign. But the pain was getting worse and worse. So I called the doctor and they said, come th first thing in the morning. So I went first thing in the morning and found out I was going in for the procedure to have it cut open and removed. Honestly, that really gave me a lot of relief. A couple hours after that, I started bleeding a lot, so they had to take me back in and cauterize the area. And then my doctor went ahead and just admitted me so that they can observe things and make sure that everything was going in the right direction. I was discharged the next night and then came home and went to sleep right away. I got home around 9.15 and at midnight, I woke up and I wasn't doing well at all. We ended up having to call an ambulance and take me to the nearest hospital. So we still don't know exactly what was going on if I was suffering from severe dehydration um, because my numbers for dehydration looked normal, but all of a sudden like I started getting a fever, then I started freezing and then the fever would go away and they were just watching me for about, I'd say seven hours or so, maybe a little longer than that, maybe like nine nine or 10 hours. It's kind of blurry for me because I almost blacked out. I had like sweat pouring out of me. It was almost like somebody took the hose and just was spraying me down. That's how much water was coming out of my body. I turned white as a ghost. I literally was just constantly trying to stay conscious. I had severe tachycardia. I drank one and a half bottles of water because I thought maybe I just needed to correct some dehydration, but I was like, how could I be that dehydrated? I just had all this water before I went to sleep. So we still don't know for sure exactly, but I was already on an antibiotic and it could just be that the area was, you know, still infected and the antibiotics hadn't had a chance to work. I'm not sure. So now I am six days after the abscess removal. As you can see, I'm in bed and I'm kind of on my side right now. This only lasts for a short period of time. I either need to stand, but I'm quite weak, so I can't stand very long, um, or I need to lay flat. And that doesn't mean sitting up in the bed. It, when laying flat means like laying flat. You can use a pillow, but your whole entire bottom has to be flat, otherwise the pressure on it can cause another abscess can cause bleeding, it can cause a lot of things, and I have no desire to move backwards. So that's where I'm at right now. I did the Barbie butt surgery, I did the whole thing where they sewed it closed, and then now it's an open wound. So it's pretty deep, I think they said it's about three inches deep, so I have to have a nurse come every single day to pack it, lots of fun. Um, had to order a special like working desk that I can use while I'm laying flat in my bed, which I'm so grateful for, because you know, First of all, you don't want to stay at home and do nothing. I mean, there's only so much TV you can watch and everybody who watches my stuff knows that I love to work and it helps the time go by quicker, you know, and you feel like you're being productive, you're actually doing things. I'm four weeks post-op. I'm going to give you guys another update when I'm eight weeks post-op, which will also be about a month post-op um, from having the abscess removal. So I'll update you guys on both to let you know how I'm doing. Fingers crossed there's no more setbacks. Thanks again for tuning in and I will talk to you guys soon.